I have wanted to make this video for almost 10 years now, and finally I have the chance. These are both core box planes. They look very different, but they do the same thing. They make core boxes. I know, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? But wait, what's, what's a core box? At its simplest, a core box is a pattern used by pattern makers to make cores. Okay, I'm sorry that didn't explain much, did it? Let me, let me back up a hair. I'm about to explain what is a core and a core box and what all this means. If you want to jump straight to the planes themselves, here's a timestamp. This particular topic is just so far out of our standard everyday use that it's actually kind of hard to explain. So first let me back up and say who used these. These were used by a pattern maker. I have a whole video on who is a pattern maker, what is a pattern maker. So if you want to see more detail on that, I'll leave a link to it down below. But basically a pattern maker is someone who made patterns. Patterns were the things that you cast items in. So if I wanted to make this rail or this piece or any cast iron piece, I have to make a pattern to cast it in. The pattern maker made those patterns. They were basically the black belt ninjas of the woodworking world. If you wanted to cast something interesting, like this flywheel, the gears, everything on this is cast, you would actually make this out of wood first, and you would use that then to make the mold in the sand. The piece made out of wood was the pattern. It was the master that every single one of these were cast off of. Every now and then, a pattern maker would have to make a negative. They have to make an item that creates a void inside of a casting. The mold would be made of a cope and drag, the two sides of it, but if you want a cavity running through it in a weird direction, you need to basically make a rod of sand inside of the casting. If I wanted to cast a gear with a big hole in the middle, well then I would have to make a core box. This would create a core. It would have this empty space that they could pack with sand, then take that out and put it into the mold and create a hollow inside of their mold. That hollow or core inside of the mold was made with the core box and that core box was made by a core box plane. Cool! Wow! That took a lot. The core box plane makes this half round cut into it. And the problem is, sometimes you need this to be one inch, sometimes you need it to be half inch, sometimes you need it to be 765s, sometimes you need it to be eight inches. Sometimes you need to be a foot in diameter. You never know what the width you're going to need for your core, so you need to have a plane that can make any radius in a half round of a board. Because if you have one half, and then you cut the other half, then when you put them together, now you can create a core, that solid round piece from this mold. Most of them are shaped like this with a V, and the nice thing is, because this wall rides on this corner, and that wall rides on that corner, no matter where it is in the radius, you're actually gonna get a perfect circle out of it as this runs around. As long as you don't touch the outside corners, this will give you an exact circle all the way around. A lot of pattern makers made their own core box planes. They're relatively simple. It's just a 90 degrees slab of something, most of the time wood. Often they put a bead of brass or something wear resistant right on that corner. And then you have a blade poking out right at that tip. And that's all it is. Stanley stepped in and said, well, hey, we can make that. And they came up with the 57. And this thing is actually kind of cool. This one is loaned to me by a friend of the channel. And the interesting thing about it is these leaves can each come out. If I loosen these two screws, then these panels can come loose. You can see how there's just a short rod that goes in this hole and then these slide in together. And you can actually get other panels that then separate these so that you can have multiple pieces and you can get bigger and bigger and bigger core boxes. You'll also notice in here there's a hole here and a hole here and what you would have is a rod and turnbuckle that would go across and that turnbuckle would allow you to micro adjust to make sure that this is exactly 90 degrees. The middle plates that would have gone in there also had rods that went across to separate from one side to the other. The Stanley 57 is kind of cool and it works really well. The problem is when it slides through that core, it's running on these plates. And sometimes those plates bruise these corners and actually push them a little farther apart. So your core actually gets slightly larger and slightly larger, especially on softwood. A couple other companies came up with this design. And the interesting thing about this is it doesn't slide inside that core. It actually houses on the outside of the board. The board then slides on these rails as it runs through. And this finger cutter will take a small slice out. And every time you advance the wheel forward, that cutter rotates just a little bit. You can see as I turn this, it rotates through and every pass, it takes off a little bit more material around that corner. So let's show these in use. First thing I need to do is determine how wide is my core going to be. In this case, I'm gonna use a marking gauge to mark out 
those two corner edges. And I want to stay away from those because those are what determine the radius of the circle. Then I can come into the pattern and draw the circle on the end, or I could try and do it with dividers, but balancing right on the edge of the board is a little difficult. To remove the majority of that material, it's easier to come in with a hollow and clean it out, or I could just come in with a normal plow plane and cut out the majority of it with a rectangular plow. Let's do that. The plow plane is fairly straightforward. Just take the material, and we're gonna get down close to that line. Now you can see how we've come in relatively close to that line. Now we can use the core box plane. Now one of the interesting things about this plane is you want the iron sticking out on one face or the other. You don't want it sticking out on both because you're gonna progress around the curve. You just want to be cutting on one edge or the other. In this case, I have it sticking out just a little bit on this side and it's nice and smooth over here on this side, not sticking out at all. That's gonna allow me to start it up on this edge and just run around the circle. In each pass, it's taking off one shaving on that side. As long as I keep it pressed down in, it'll continue. Just take off those shavings and continue around. I messed up a little bit at the beginning, so I'm just a hair off my line, but let me show you how this looks. And we continue. Each time, just taking another radius off that corner. Now, once I get down to the middle, I have to stop and come back from the other side because I don't want the iron then cutting into this edge. Let me show you how this one first. Every time I pull it back and run it forward, it advances that iron just a little bit. And we can take out the next shaving. So you can see, it cleans out one shaving on every pass. And now you can see on this one how I just about hit the line. I wasn't quite as off. So I'm actually going to extend this one out a little bit farther to match this radius. I can do that by loosening this screw and then I'm going to push this iron until it just touches that other line. Then we can tighten it back down and go at it again. I can advance the screw back to the beginning. Oops, crack split out that corner there. And just like that, we have a core box. And if I want to come in and smooth it out a little bit, I can use a gouge and just kind of clean off some of those little edges. A pattern maker would very easily know how to do this. And then I can take it with the other half, and now I've got a core box, except for this one's at the right dimension and that one's at the larger dimension, and that one can have split out. So this is actually a very fast history run through on core box planes. There's a lot more information on it. I'll leave a link to Brown Tool Auction. He did a video a while ago that goes into them a little bit more in detail, some fascinating information. But they're honestly a lot of fun. Do I have any need for one of these? No, I don't plan on doing much casting or pattern work, nor do I have the skill that would normally be required for a pattern maker. Pattern makers do exist out there, but they are a very rare breed and they do some really cool things. So there you have it, core box planes. <laughs> They're really kind of fun. And uh, do I have a need for one? No. And I do want to say a huge thank you to the fans, particularly the two individuals who let me borrow these for the video. Thank you, without you guys, um, we wouldn't be here. They're one of those tools I've always wanted to buy, but I've never been able to justify it just to make a video because I'm never really going to use them. Though maybe at some point I'll find a good deal on one and have some fun with it. Maybe do some pattern working. 
We'll see. <laughs> so I hope you like this. If you have any questions, thoughts, ideas, snide remarks, throw those in the comments down below. Those really help out the channel. Even the snide remarks, thank you. You guys help our channel grow and get us in front of more people and really means a lot. Or you could just put CBD. Comment down below. Thank you. But if you really want to be amazing, truly wonderful, benevolent, gorgeous, and astronomically incredible, Think about joining these people over here because those are some of the patrons on Patreon. Between patrons and members, you guys, uh, you're the ones who make this happen. You're the one who's allowed me to do things like this and, and get out here. So thank you. Without you, we wouldn't be here. So if you'd like to help out with that, find out more, you know what to do. Link's description. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Wow, I can feel it right here. These things are a serious core workout. Uh, thumbnail.